Here I have a container of water and a hose and a tap. There's no flow at the moment for two reasons. Firstly, the outlet of the hose is above the water level, which is just there, and the tap is turned off. So what does it mean when I turn the tap off? What I've done is restricted the outlet of the drum to a point where no water can flow. In other words, I've increased the resistance to flow of the circuit so that nothing flows out. To demonstrate that, I'll put the hose below the level of the water, make sure that doesn't come off, and no water flows. If I turn that on, the water will flow. Now watch what happens as I raise the pipe, raise the hose. At the point where the outlet from the hose is the same level as the water in the drum, the flow stops. Why does the flow stop there? Because there is now no pressure difference between the water in the drum and the water in the hose. If I increase that pressure difference by lowering the hose, OK, I can make a mess for why this is home today. The flow increases with the distance between the level there and the level there. In other words, as the pressure difference increases for a given resistance, the flow increases. So let's go the other way. Let's increase the resistance and give ourselves a constant pressure. A constant pressure between there and there. Let's decrease the resistance. OK, I've reduced, decreased the resistance. You can see the water is starting to flow. As I decrease it further and further and further, the flow increases. So we've just discovered two ways that I can affect the flow out of my hose. I can vary the pressure with a fixed resistance, or I can vary the resistance with a fixed pressure. And that is the essence of Ohm's law. What we have here is a standard power supply. It has a main switch a voltmeter, an ammeter, two controls where I can vary the voltage and I can vary the current. It's what's called a dual regulated power supply. The voltmeter is the equivalent to the level of water in the drum. The level of the water in the drum is the pressure that pushes the current through the restriction. In this case, the voltmeter, the voltage, is the pressure that pushes the current through the restriction. This is the, volt, this is the ammeter. The ammeter indicates how much flow is going through the resistor pushed by the voltage. This is the equivalent of the water coming out of the end of the hose. This is the flow of electricity. The water coming out of the hose was the flow of water. This little fella here, you can see, is a 5 watt 22 ohm resistor. The purpose of that is to control the flow of electricity in exactly the same way, or a very similar way, to the way the tap controlled the water flow from the drum. Firstly, I will do the equivalent of closing the tap. You can see I have removed the end of the resistor, so there is now infinite resistance and there is nowhere for the water to go or the electricity to go in effect the tap is closed now I'll increase the pressure 
I can take the pressure as high as I like. I've got 30 volts there, but I have no current flow. I have no current flow because the resistance is too high. I have infinite resistance. So let's turn that back down and I'll reconnect the load to the output. So let's increase the pressure or the voltage to 10 volts and you'll see I have half an amp. We're on the high voltage scale, on the high current scale, on the outer one. 10 volts, half an amp. If I increase that to 20 volts, 20 volts, 1 amp. This time I'll take the voltage up to 20 volts and it will give us 1 ohm, uh, 1, 1 amp. All right? Now I'll leave the settings there, I'll turn that off and I'll change resistors. So now I've changed resistors, I've got a 39 ohm resistor which is as close as I can get to 40 and there's the 22 ohm resistor which was as close as I could get to 20. So I've doubled the resistance in the circuit which is basically the equivalent of closing the tap. OK, so let's turn it back on. There's our 20 volts and now you'll see I'm only pulling half an amp. So I've got the same voltage but I've got half the current for double the resistance and I assure you that is no coincidence. So let's go back into the classroom and have a look and see how that works on paper. We've seen that the flow can be varied in two ways. We can vary the resistance to flow with a constant pressure or we can vary the pressure with a constant resistance and either of them will vary the current. We'll call it current because that's basically what it is. Current is just flow. OK, so we'll start by putting what we want to know on one side. The old equals sign, like any formula. So we know the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. So we will put the resistance on the bottom. And we know the flow is directly proportional to the pressure. So we will put the pressure on the top line. So we have the current equal to the pressure divided by the resistance. Let's see how we translate that into electrical terms. Current in water is the amount of flow of water. The current in electricity is the amount of flow of electrons. In electricity we have a symbol for current. It is I. I stands for intensity of flow, which is what current is. So you'll always see current written as I. The old equal sign. I is equal to the voltage, which is the pressure, divided by the resistance, which is the restriction to flow. So this is starting to look familiar, isn't it? Very similar to that. The current in electrical flow is equal to the pressure divided by the restriction or the resistance to flow. In electrical terms, the current in an electrical circuit is equal to the pressure or the voltage divided by the resistance or the restriction to flow. A very simple way to remember it and I find by making this simple comparison it makes it easy to understand. Okay, so how do you remember that? There's a very simple way of remembering Ohm's law. We draw a triangle. On the top of the triangle we put the V. You will also often see this written as E. E stands for electromotive force, which is what voltage is. But it's going out of fashion. Most people now use V, so we'll stick with that. Draw a line across there. 
put your I for current, intensity of flow, which is what current is. You put your I for current there, and your R for resistance or restriction to flow there. If you want to calculate your voltage, cover your voltage. Voltage is I times R, your current times your restriction. If you want to find your current, you cover up the current, it is your voltage divided by your resistance. If you want to find your resistance, cover your resistance and it is the voltage divided by the current. And that's a very simple way to remember it. OK, so let's do some sums and see how this works out. Just for a reminder, we'll put our triangle up here with our V or E, you remember that's voltage or electromotive force, same thing, whichever you like. Your I there, I for current intensity of flow, and resistance there, resistance or restriction to flow. Now you remember the first one we had, we had 10 volts, we had 20 ohms roughly, we had 22, but 20 is as near as you can, I could get. And we had 0.5 of an amp. Or you could also say 500 milliamp. So let's put that in a formula and see how we go. Quickly up here we'll draw our triangle. V equals IR. So Let's work out the resistance that we had. So we want the resistance. So resistance is equal to V over I, which is in this case 10 volts, over half an amp, 0.5. And if we calculate that out, we will get 20 ohms which is what we had. Then the next one we had, we had 20 volts with a resistance of 20 ohms and we had a current of 1 amp. You could write that if you wanted to as a thousand milliamps. Maybe a dry triangle, V equals I R. Now this time let's work out the current. We want to know the current, so we block our current and v, I equals V over R. So I will be the voltage which was 20 over the resistance which was 20 ohms. That equals 1 amp. Now let's look at the other example. Again we had 20 volts. This time we had 40 ohms or 39 near enough for this example and we had half an amp or if you like 500 milliamps. Alright, a little triangle again. V equals I R. And this time we'll work out the voltage. So voltage equals IR from our triangle up there. The current was 0.5. The resistance was 40. So half of 40 equals 20. And as I said earlier, that is no coincidence that is Ohm's law.